why is your AP Chem teacher yapping so much about Q versus K? It's time to finally find out. First thing we need to do is just define each of these. So K is the equilibrium constant. You've been exposed to this for a while. You're looking at KC, KP, and KSP, or the equilibrium constant in respect to concentration, pressure of gases, or the solubility product. It's always going to be the concentration of the products raised to the power of the coefficients from the balanced equation over the concentration of the reactants, again, raised to the power of the coefficients from the balanced reaction. And you never include solids or pure liquids in any of these equilibrium expressions because they don't impact equilibrium. Guess what? Q is actually exactly the same. The difference is that it is known as the reaction quotient, and it basically measures the relationship at any point other than equilibrium. And basically, you're going to compare Q versus K to see where the reaction is. Are we making more product? Are we making more reactant? Or are we at equilibrium? So if Q is greater than K, that means the concentration of the products is greater than that of those reactants. So think about Le Chatelier's principle. When the concentration of the products is greater than the reactants, the reverse reaction is going to be favored. As we're forming more products, if Q is less than K, then we're going to favor the forward reaction and we're forming more product. And if Q is equal to K, well, that means our system is at equilibrium. All right, so that's not so bad, but let's talk about what happens when we are looking at the formation of a precipitate. This is where things start to get a little interesting because now if we look at Q versus KSP or the solubility product constant, you'll notice that it's the opposite of what we just talked about. So if Q is less than KSP, this means that a precipitate will not form in the solution because the solution is unsaturated, which is confusing, right? Because if Q is less than KSP, you'd think that we'd be forming the products. And we do. But when Q is greater than KSP, the precipitate will form. Why does it feel backwards? It's because in these precipitation reactions, the solid precipitate is your reactant. So we're still following the same comparison that we used above, where we are favoring the reactant side when Q is less than K, and we're favoring the product side when Q is greater than K. The difference is, in these precipitation reactions, the precipitate is the reactant. Follow Chem with Corinne for more helpful short-form chemistry content like this. And be sure to check out my live last chance review for the 2025 AP Chemistry exam. Yeah.